Allow me to introduce myself. I am the last sane sports fan. Uh, I am a genius by trade. I just knew too much. and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. Got a few topics that we want to cover today, so let's get right to it. First off, I've got a question for all of you because this one's been kind of racking in my brain the last day or so. Yesterday on ESPN FC, they basically kind of revealed the odds to win the Gold Cup. The United States is defending champions. They've played fairly well over the last few weeks to months yet they are in second place in terms of the odds to Mexico. Now, I mean, this is kind of splitting hairs, I suppose, if you want to be fair. But uh, one of them was 6-5, to, to five, I believe that was Mexico, and uh, the other one was 6-4, to four, or 4-6, four to six, however, whichever number you're supposed to say first. But I, I have to ask you guys, why is Mexico favored at all, other than the fact that it seems like Mexico, for some reason, is always trying to be considered the top of CONCACAF, despite the fact that I don't even know that they are anymore. I Sometimes, like, Costa Rica was the one that actually won, I believe, CONCACAF uh, to go into the World Cup uh, in that regard. So it's just, I, I, I can't understand. I mean, it's literally <laughs> forcing me to lose my words here. I can't understand why Mexico is favored when they really just haven't done anything. I looked up the records post-World Cup, and they're not despairingly different, but Mexico has three wins, uh, three losses, and five draws against mainly Central American opponents, other than when they played in the... Um, they played Chile in a friendly right after the World Cup, and uh, they also played uh, South American opponents in Copa America. But other than that, it's been mainly like Guatemala, Ecuador, Honduras, Costa Rica, what have you. And they they haven't played particularly well. They've had a lot of ties. Uh, they haven't looked like they're going to do anything. Whereas the United States, while there was a long period there where a lot of fans were getting on their case wondering maybe if there was a mistake to keep Jurgen Klinsmann because they were allowing a lot of goals late in games and whatnot. But as long as I counted right, uh, the United States has four wins, two losses, and a draw post-World Cup. Now, like I said, that's not a huge dis di uh, difference compared to Mexico, but to me that's enough of a difference to say the United States is in better form and they've played better opponents. I mean, I'm sorry, but Denmark, regardless of what you think about them anymore, is a European team that is better than just about anybody in, in Central America. And the United States played them to a draw. The United States beat Netherlands. The United States beat Germany. I don't give a, I don't give a damn if these are friendlies or not. The United States, to me, is going into the Gold Cup with more momentum. Now, we'll see how they play against Guatemala. Uh, there is a game tonight that's a friendly heading into the Gold Cup, which starts next week. To me, the United States should be favored. They're defending champions. They're playing well. Uh, they, they've got things rolling for them. Now, maybe that's the homer in me coming out, but to me, that's the way that it is. Moving on to the NHL, uh, big trade yesterday, at least locally. T.J. Oshie was sent to the Washington Capitals for Troy Brower. Uh, Phoenix, I believe it's Copley, but they've also said Copley on the radio uh, and a 2016 third-round draft pick. Now, the, everybody is basically just uh, polar opposites on this idea. Everybody either loves it or hates it. I'm one of the few that's in the middle. I was never, I was not for or against trading T.J. Oshie. I was a proponent of change. I did not believe that the St. Louis Blues could go into next season with the exact same lineup. Now, whether that would have been David Backus, Alex Steen, T.J. Oshie, all of them would have made me sad in the moment, but I would have realized that potentially it is what is best for the team. 
Now, it's always difficult when you've seen players grow up and come up through your team and you get emotionally attached. Uh, I still would have liked to have seen Patrick Berglund go before TJ Oshie, but uh, maybe there's another deal in the works. Maybe Patrick Berglund is still going to be a member of the St. Louis Blues, and hopefully he can finally live up to the potential that uh, so many had labeled him with. TJ Oshie, the problem that fans have trading him is he was the face of the franchise for so long. My only problem with this trade is fairly superficial because I'm worried about the whole St. Louis thing that it seems like no matter what any St. Louis franchise does, as soon as they think that they've gotten enough out of a player and get rid of them, then they show that next level with whatever team they go to next. It happened with Jerome Bettis. Uh, Brett Hull won a Stanley Cup after he left St. Louis. Brendan Shanahan won a Cup after he left St. Louis. Adam Oates had some great years after he left St. Louis. As I said, you can't necessarily base an entire franchise off of that worry. Now, Troy Brower is a good player. I didn't know a ton about him prior to this trade, but I've heard of him, and I looked up his stats. He'd scored more goals in his career than T.J. Oshie in the regular season. Now, granted, he has played in more games, and he's also a year older, so that might give you the little bit of disparity that's there, although it's about 40 goals, and T.J. Oshie has never scored more than 19. Playoffs? Really, that's kind of a wash. It was really kind of a player-for-player player deal, and then St. Louis picked up a draft pick and a goalie that will probably be used to fill out their Chicago roster in the AHL. Uh, I believe uh, Brower has seven career goals in the playoffs compared to five for T.J. Oshie. T.J. Oshie tends to get a few more points because Brower is... Um, more. Brower is really kind of what the Blues need, and Doug Armstrong said it. Uh, he he didn't necessarily want to trade T.J. Yoshi, but he felt that the Blues have other players that have similar skill sets to T.J. Yoshi, and they brought in Troy Brower because he's going to score goals, but he's also going to get in the dirty areas, get in the corners. He stands in front of the net. He said it himself. He loves to stand in front of the net and get in those dirty areas and score goals that way, and that's kind of what the Blues need. Whether Breuer, whether Brower pans out. That is going to be the key for this trade. If Brower, if Brower continues on the pace that he has set over the past few years, in which he's averaged at least 20 goals uh, or more, then I think it, it's an okay trade for the Blues. It's, it's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to put the Blues over the hump necessarily. But sometimes you do need an infusion of new blood, and Troy Brower has won a Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks. So maybe now the St. Louis Blues need to get that kind of piece in there that's going to be able to tell them, hey, this is what you need to be able to do to get to the next round, to get to the next level, to be able to challenge for Stanley Cups, because I've been there. Maybe that's how it works out. That's what the St. Louis Blues are hoping for. I don't think, despite what a lot of people want to believe, and they want to say negative things about Doug Armstrong and Ken Hitchcock, and that is their right, that's their opinion, nobody's really going to change it. But I don't think anybody really had that big of an axe to grind to where they couldn't have put it behind them and carried on if they felt that T.J. Oshie was that talented of a player. They're just looking to change things up. Things haven't been working. Things are. Sometimes they say you need a new voice in, to, in the coaching area. Sometimes you need a new player. Sometimes a change of scenery is very good for players. Uh, T.J. Oshie is an excellent player. Uh, Washington's getting a heck of a player. He's going to play hard most nights. That was T.J. Oshie's problem is this last year or so. Every once in a while, you wouldn't see the same T.J. Oshie every single time. Uh, if Washington gets in a lot of shootouts, then they've got themselves a hell of a player because T.J. Oshie is one of the best in the league in terms of shootouts. He has a great uh, shootout percentage. But the St. Louis Blues were looking to change things up. Whether or not they make any more deals or not, that remains to be seen. They still have to sign uh, Tarasenko. That's the main priority. I just saw that they signed Jake Allen to a new two-year deal, so he's locked up for at least the foreseeable future. And I think the Blues are going to be in a position to where they're still going to challenge for the Central Division. They're still going to challenge for a potential Stanley Cup. They're, they're making good moves. They're not always going to be seen as the right moves by everybody. Because 
if you really think about it, St. Louis has been very lucky under Doug Armstrong. They've made a lot of good moves that were seen as the right move. Uh, they dumped salary in Chris Stewart. It ended up being a pretty good trade to get rid of uh, David Perron because he hasn't lit the world on fire since he's left. He's done about the same as he did with St. Louis. Uh, there's been other trades to where they've picked up good pieces. They haven't given up a lot in return. And that's been Doug Armstrong's M.O. That wasn't necessarily what happened here, so I think people are kind of wondering why the deal was made. If you really think about it, with the exception of the Lou Brock trade that the St. Louis Cardinals, very few general managers on the other side of it get fleeced. It's just not the way the pro sports works. Somebody gets traded away because they didn't, the team that was holding on to that player didn't feel that they were living up to their potential. So they say, okay, well, maybe you can go over here and do better, and that's what's best for you, and maybe this player that we're bringing in is what's best for us because we believe he fills a certain hole. That's what trades really are most of the time. They're not always axes to grind. They're not always trying to just basically get rid of a player because I don't think that's how professionals work. I'm not I'm not pulling the wool over my eyes. I'm not saying that there aren't vendettas and uh, certain uh, relationships end up faltering or whatever. I kind of think that's a big reason why Yaroslav Halak is not here. But these things are just the way pro sports work, and unfortunately it's a, it's a side effect. As fans, we get emotionally attached, and unfortunately that's just the way things work, and it, it, it gets to be hard to let go of certain players uh, when you get emotionally attached, when they've been brought up through your team system, and you feel that they're a, a, an excellent piece of your team, and you, you you have to move on. It's there's nothing more as a fan you can do. Uh, p people can say that they won't buy their tickets. They cannot go to games. That's their right. If they, I mean these things are expensive. That's not that's not could kid ourselves. If people don't want to spend the money because they don't feel that management is doing what they want them to do, that's perfectly within their rights. Uh, but the wheels are going to keep churning. The Blues are going to keep playing. They're going to be on the ice come October. And whoever's in the stands is in the stands. And ultimately, life goes on. Uh, it, it, again, I wish all the best to T.J. Oshie. I was not for or against the trade. I think if Brower, as I said, puts up the stats that he has put up, then I think it's basically an apples-to-apples -apples trade. I think it'll work out for both teams. And uh, luckily for the St. Louis Blues, T.J. Oshie is now in the East because uh, you, you never want to face a teammate like that so many times in a season. Twice is perfectly okay. Now, I've just about used up all my time. I think I've rambled on for enough. That is the view from the Midwest. What are your views on today's topics? Comment, rate, and subscribe. Watch some soccer this weekend. It's going to be an excellent soccer weekend. The United States plays Guatemala tonight. St. Louis FC, if you're in the area, uh, they are playing the Charlotte Independents. Uh, you can watch that on YouTube. That is Saturday. And then Sunday, obviously, the big Women's World Cup final. So it should be a really great weekend of soccer. But until the next time, I'll see you then.